We are here at Meeks Park in Blairsville, Georgia. Later on, we're going to be at the dog park for uh, dog distraction training and also downtown. Yes, yes, yeah. We're in downtown Blairsville at a different time where there's more shops open and more going on. Yesterday, it was low distraction to moderate. Today, it's more high distraction. So here we go. Cooper Hill. Sit. How are you? <laughs> Good for you. With tight spaces, you'll want to use your follow. Cooper, follow. Cooper Hill. He's in training. Thank you, though, for your compliment. Appreciate it. Good boy. Good job, Cooper. 
he's a good boy. He's a good boy. <laughs> it's nice, Lucy. Good. Freak. <laughs> good boy. <laughs> Cooper, yeah. Cooper, yeah. Cooper, sit. Where's your ball? Break, 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 break. break. Oh. Good catch. Boy. <laughs> now get ready. Break. Good catch, Cooper. <laughs> Good boy. Yesterday, Cooper was at Meeks Park here for the first time. He worked in this area here and just probably about 100 feet in, and that was it. So today we're gonna be working further into the park where there's more distractions. I actually consider this a high distraction environment. Not sure what uh, all is going on here, but for four years, all the dogs I've ever brought here in the interior of the park, they just view that as a very high distraction. What's really awesome about this park is that it provides different levels of distraction in terms of surfaces. I'm standing on a uh, gravel surface. Obviously, we got lots of grass. And then later on, when I'm at the gazebo, which is a boardwalk, that's very pretty and also provides a different distraction level for Cooper. Grass holds the highest distraction for their nose than the gravel, unless there's some food dropped on it or something like that, that will surpass the grass. And the wood surface is probably in between the, the grass and, and the gravel. Each surface holds a different level of uh, sense uh, for their noses, and we'll see which one is the most attractive to, to Cooper. So here we go. Cooper heel. 
And when I'm at a new section of a place that he has not visited, I'm going to put him in a heel and sit to have more control so that I can get more information of uh, where he is in this program to challenge him with different tasks here. Okay, so I'm going to walk up on the higher distraction surface and see if his nose goes down. Okay, so he did really well. He was on task. And here we go again. Heel. A structured walk is if you're going from point A to point B, and let's say you need to get there in a uh, pretty quick time because you got to head off to work. So you want to make sure that you're in a command that's going to make you successful to uh, fulfill that time gap. So I would use either uh, probably a heel and sit. Talk a little bit about structured walks and unstructured walks. A unstructured walk would be like a potty break or if you want to do a meet and greet with another dog, you would obviously give the release command. Uh, at any point in time, you can recapture whatever behavior you're seeing that you don't want with either a calm or a sit and wait or a place if there's an object nearby in the park to utilize that command. So we're going to go ahead and move into our follow command. I'm just going to gather up some of the length of this six foot leash. You can also get a uh, four foot leash, which gives you a, a little bit better uh, success in terms of leash management. If you're a big walker, I highly recommend a four foot leash. And here we go with our follow. Cooper follow. And again, he can go to either side or in front or behind me and it just um, looks like he's following on the left side since we've done a lot of heel and sit. And you can see when you're on a narrow boardwalk like this how important turns become. When you're on vacation, for example, in Florida, there are so many beautiful boardwalks. So having control, especially with a large dog, is really important on these um, elevated surfaces. Cooper sit. OK, 
Cooper Hill. Thing about having a trained dog, especially a dog that can sit for a duration on command, is that you can sit as long as you would like without the uh, uh, dog pulling the leash and trying to pull you off the bench. <laughs> okay, there's a dog that's growing. Let me turn the camera around so you can see me sit. Cooper, follow. We're at the dog park and there's a couple of dogs here and some people for distraction training. And here we go. Good. Change of pace. Follow. what I'm trying to achieve. It's a nice close and follow for going on to the trails. We don't want them too far away and head down the trails. Okay. Cooper plays. Cooper sit. Cooper heel. Off leash heel. Cooper heel. Cooper heel. Cooper heel. Cooper heel. Cooper, come. Cooper, place. Okay, 
basically what I'm looking for is the dog to run at a high statistical level in a straight line between me and the board. Um, as you can see, there's some agility sticks there. He sometimes runs around those to the board, so that time he ran in a straight line. So let's continue with the exercise of recall and place. Cooper, come. Cooper, come. Sit. Okay, there's a back hole that's uh, going by in the parking lot. It's a good distraction. Cooper, place. Cooper, come. Cooper, sit. Wait. Cooper, come. Cooper, come. Wait. Cooper, come. Cooper Place. Cooper Place. Cooper come. Sit. Got his ball from under the tripod here. Let me help him out. Let me get it for you. Okay, so he's taking his foot to get it. Okay. Good boy. Okay, break. <laughs> 